Welcome, welcome to the evening show with Jackie Brambles. This is the home of great conversations and of meandering through the most meaningful musical memories of your favorite artists of the 70s, 80s and 90s. Tonight's guest, as our opening track, Music and Lights from 1982 may suggest, is a member of the band Imagination. And it's just great to have Lee John with us tonight. Hi, Jackie. How are you? Long time. Long time since we last spoke. And uh, you're celebrating a long time in the biz. This is the 40th anniversary for you, isn't it? Yes, it is 40 years, 40 years plus. It's been a wonderful, um, what's it, journey, actually. And I'm still, and my train is still left, it's still on, you know, still on the track. Now, I know you've just announced the Flashback Greatest Hits Tour that starts next May in Glasgow and then moves across the UK. Uh, fill us in on, on what you've been up to of late, because you're a man who is always involved in several things at once, I know. I've had a record out last year with Plastic Bertrand, Don't Stop the World Turning. I've uh, just had another track, which is being in the chart with George Bacillo, Jorge Bacillo, who's a two-time Grammy Award winning artist. But for that, I was uh, a big record uh, with the Gorillas, and we, we shows together. So that oh, yeah. that was very, very major, and a lot of diverse audiences have kind of gravitated to me. But I've done a smooth jazz album with uh, Bouchard of Shack Attack. Oh, wow. And uh, I've also been... Uh, you know, doing a lot of film work. I've done a, quite a few documentaries. I'm still working on Flashback, the history of UK British black music, and um, uh, which has got over 100 interviews and a lot, a lot of, a lot of content. And I finished a documentary on the island of Santa Lucia, which is where my parents are from. And I've done three documentaries for SOS Children. Um, and uh, I'm doing something very special. Uh, to do with a family member, but I can't say what. Ah. But so it's been very, very, very busy and I'm doing shows and I've got shows going all the way through throughout the year, celebrating 40th of imagination with the 40th anniversary box set with 17 albums on it. My God, your problem is you're not busy enough. That's the thing. <laughs> so you asked, you wanted to know what I've been up to. This. So that is telling you that uh, it's, there's been a lot happening. I mean, you must have the sort of personality that thrives on having that many balls going, juggling in the air at the same time, because for other, others would be overwhelmed by it. I'm used to it because, you know, from the early days, you know, I used to, I mean, before Imagination started, I was um, doing a day job, I'd gig in the evenings, I'd be working in the Saturday afternoons and then do a show on the Saturday night. And it became a normality to me and then when we broke with our very first single body talk um i just you know we we would be touring in a little citroen car I remember all the way in france and spain and italy and we go to all these different radio stations and then we jump back fly back to the uk to do a tv and then jump back out again uh this was the analog age wow so i was kind of conditioned to it was about the work and being creative you know and I, in those days, for example, I remember flying back from Spain and the plane, uh, before I even landed, I got a call from my producer saying, Lee, you got to write this. We, 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 we're, we're, you know, we, we, we need another song for the album or something like that. <laughs> and I would come home, finish the song and come back into the studio to, to, to record and sing it. It was, it was crazy. So I've kind, I'm kind of used to that level of, of, of work. But um, obviously during the, the lockdown, it was interesting because I kind of reverted back to the analog way of doing things. Right. And, um, and reaching out to different people and trying to encourage some of the youth and some of the people who were feeling, you know, a little bit downtrodden because of the, the way the situation was. So it gave me an yeah. area, another arena of, of trying to uplift, you know, especially through music, you know. Body Talk, the debut hit single for Imagination, which got to number four in 1981. And Imagination's Lee John is our special guest tonight here on The Great Conversation. Uh, let's do a bit of a, a deep dive then, Lee, on where and when your love for music began. Do you have a clear memory of the first record you ever bought? Yeah, I mean, oh my goodness. Uh, I was at that time, my parents were split, and I'd I was living in America at the time. And, you know, uh, I said the first album I bought, because I think singles were bought from my mum would buy me, you know, records and things like that. But I remember when I actually went out and said, right, I want to buy this album, was an album by Eddie Kendricks called My People Hold On. 
and uh, he, he just left The Temptations, and it was a solo album. And there's a track on it called "Girl, You Need a Change of Mind," and it was a really, it was a really long, funky record, about seven, eight minutes long, and it was epic. And I just, you know, it, you know, when you fall in love with a track, you know, and it's like, wow, this is my song, this is my album, you know. And uh, I think that's my claim to fame. As a kid, there were uh, loads of other things, you know, that um, my mum would buy for me. But this one, I actually saved my money up and bought it. Baby. From 1972, Girl, You Need a Change of Mind, Eddie Kendricks, one of the first songs that lodged itself firmly in the heart and mind of tonight's special guest, Lee John of Imagination. And we'll be back to continue our great conversation with Lee next. Welcome back to the evening show with Jackie Brambles, where tonight it's just you and me and our special guest, Lee John of Imagination, cozying on in for our great conversation. Uh, so before the break, we heard about Eddie Kendricks of The Temptations being one of the first musical influences on you, Lee. Who else do you remember from that time growing up in America as you did? You know what it was? It's really weird because only when I got into my early teens that I started to put names to artists. I used to know the songs more than I knew the people, you know. And yeah, well, again, when I was in America, um, I got introduced to Billie Holiday. And it was only because Dinah Ross had done Lady Sings the Blues. But I had no idea that she was the same person who sang Baby Love. I didn't know. You know, it was like... To, so it was it was afterwards that I I started listening to all the Supremes of the Motown records when I came back to the UK um uh, in the seventies and then realized that she had been in the group. <laughs> so it was a you know, two different people. So I it was but I love songs. I always loved songs and uh, um and then I started to identify to who the people were, you know. From 1964, Baby Love by the Supremes, another early influence over tonight's special guest, Imagination's Lee John. What about the first live show that you would have seen, Lee? That would be at the Rainbow Theatre in the early 70s, and it was the Inner Vision Store by Stevie Wonder. Oh, my goodness. That's, a, that's a, quite a high standard to start your live shows with. And my best friend at the time was no longer with us, our best in Russell Fraser. And like, we were in a group as a duo. And we just took and another friend of ours, Rob Lenman. He was in the industry. He, he became a person in the industry. And he, him, myself, and Russell, we'd go all to these shows. And we ended up going to the Rainbow Theatre, which was just down the road from where I lived in Finsbury Park. And we saw Stevie Wonder and I had my autograph book and I met Paul McCartney and Linda McCartney and Eric Clapson and Madeline Bell and all these stars. I just was like, oh my God, oh my God. And then we, we managed to bunk backstage and meet Stevie. I still have the autograph, a picture and, and I met his, his then manager, Frau Tucker. And uh, it was, it really changed my whole view of wanting to be in the industry because at that time we only saw the stardom the poptastic side of it yeah you know as a musician as a as a writer as an artist i felt this was something much more deeper and much more um involved and where you could actually go you could have a bit of both yeah and uh, and then you know i i became a steve bond fan you know and and just bought everything a boy's born in hot damn mississippi Living for the City, from the 1973 album Inner Visions, that's Stevie Wonder, Lee John's first ever live gig. And as you got older and became involved in music yourself, uh, what were the influences that had an impact on you back then? Because the early 80s was such an incredibly creative era, wasn't it, in terms of imagery and fashion and, of course, with the emerging technology in music? Well, at the time, we would see... Um the Mothership Connection, Funkadelic, Parliament. A good evening. Uh, do not attempt to adjust your radio. We will return it to you as soon as you are grooved. They did this whole big Welcome show, and a lot of people who were who around who remember that, that show, because I think it was one show, and it like started at 7 o'clock and didn't finish till I think, nearly midnight. Wow. It was, you know, it was the Brides of Funkenstein, the Parlettes. It was the most wildest show I've ever seen. 
and that really influenced me in 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 how we you know how we dressed. I mean, it, it was it was the bordering time of Brit funk and uh, punk and new wave, and everyone was, as Sir Rodney said, so individual. And we knew that you know image was so important, and the look was, mm. and um, you know it was even when we 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 did our did our first performance on top of the pops. Our A and R guy, um, Morgan Khan, he was the one that said, "Look, you know, people got to talk about you, you know, the next day." And I'm thinking, "Oh my goodness, what is he talking about? This is, <laughs> you know, something that me and my mum would sit down and watch, and the whole family would sit down. It was what you know on TV. So yeah, um, I, you know, um, it was it was just one of those scenarios where, in in the club scene, we all wanted to be uniquely different. You know, the guys wore more makeup than the women did. You know, it was that <laughs> kind of scenario and hair was everywhere and shoulder pads and uh, and we'd get fabric and create different things you know and it would it would look great you know it looked sexy it would look great but you know um and the movements that we did on stage were what we did in the clubs and just like you know you know we'd always been moving and the gyrating what happened but the media always re- interpreted it in another way in another connotation stuff like that but if you went to the clubs we went to everybody was out there doing their thing yeah so um it especially London. So by the time the regional areas got to see us on top of the pops, for example, it exploded. <laughs> Everybody was looking like the John. Oh, it was so good. And I'm just looking actually at your um your very first top of the pops performance was fourth of June, nineteen eighty one. Really long. Um, and also in the studio with you would have been Susie and the Banshees. Uh, uh, the, um, I'll tell you who else. Susie and the Banshees. I think. It could have been Toya with Spellbound, and not Spellbound, with, I think she was in there. I want to be free. Odyssey. I think, um, Michael Jackson and, and, and Smokey Robinson were in the charts with Being With You and One Day in Your Life. Yeah. I definitely remember that. One day in your life, you'll remember. One day in your life. Michael Jackson in the charts and on the same top of the pops as Imagination when they had their debut. And before that performance, uh, they were at number 43 in the charts. And after that performance, they got to number four. So everything they did worked. And we'll be back to continue our great conversation with Lee John of Imagination next. Welcome back to the evening show with Jackie Brambles and to our great conversation with tonight's special guest, Imagination's Lee John. Uh, before the break, we were talking about that first Top of the Pops appearance. And actually, unlike most of our guests whose memories are a little foggy, you could recite pretty much everybody who was on that show. You obviously have a very clear memory of it. What else has stayed with you about that experience? You know, before us going on stage, I'd have a rundown and we'd be on the next stage and we had so many rehearsals and um and actually you know i still I, I bumped into Susie not too long ago, um because we came we were all in the north london area so it was really interesting when you think back uh those it, you know the first time being on top of the pops because it was one of those programs that the whole family watched and you watched from a kid and think well i'd be on there one day you know it was that kind of thing and um yeah it was a wonderful moment and uh I remembered when I when I did that first performance, I was so worked up because there was so much on my shoulders. I cried. <laughs> I just, oh. Seriously, I cried. I was like in tears because A&R guy said, you'll never have this moment again. And he was right because afterwards we were on there many, many, many times. I think, uh, we, were, I think we were on, as a big black British group, I think we were on more than any other British black group on there. And li- it's life-changing, as you say. Every, it's, it was such an iconic program that the whole nation sat down to watch every single week. And, and it's sort of overnight, I would imagine, your life changed immeasurably. Suddenly everybody knows who you are. You're being invited here, there and everywhere. Uh, quite often it, it seems from these conversations that as soon as you go on top of the pop, you're then almost immediately whisked off and put on a bigger act tour as their support to sort of capitalize on that exposure. Did that happen to you? No, we had our own tour. We we, we waited because we thought, okay, um, we had three hits in one. Well, actually the first album, Body Saw, In and Out of Love, Flashback, Burning Up the Sober Strike were, were top 10 in the R&B charts in America. Um, Tell Me Don't Want My Love was this hit in, in Canada. 
Um, so every track from the first album became a hit. So, you know, we waged our bets and thought, you know what, we can't go on tour yet until we do the second album because then it would make more sense. Yeah. And that was the hardest thing. So when we went out to tour, we, we headlined our own, our own tour. We didn't, we did not support anyone. It got to number two in 1982. That's just an illusion by imagination. Uh, so, as you said, you kicked things off with your own headlining tour after all those initial hits, uh, and you went on to share the same bill with some pretty impressive acts. Cool and the Gang, Earth and Fire, Sister Sledge, um, with Nile Rogers. We're always we're always together on different shows, you know. And these are people that I looked up to. That you know, I had their albums and. You know, I've done loads of work with them. Um, you know, uh, we did a big tour in Germany not too long ago where it was all of us. And I was the last act before Kuhn and the gang. So I had to really up my ante in what I was doing. <laughs> no pressure there. No pressure there. <laughs> Funny thing, everyone um, who came to see us thought I was an American act. Imagination Lee John was an American act. And I have to say, no, mate, I'm from Little London. (laughs) There must have been some amazing, magical moments along the way where you got to spend time with musical heroes. You know, music can take you to many different places. For example, I went to South Africa and because of the music, I became uh, friends with Cezzy Mandela and invited to the Mandela home and um, William Mandela cooked for me and and we had a wonderful experience and, and, you know, they came on stage. No. In South Africa, it was... A historic moment for me, Um, you know, singing to Marvin Gaye in Soul Train in in um, in in Los Angeles, you know, in his dressing room, because I only asked him why he didn't, you know, why he didn't release a particular record, and he couldn't remember it. So I'm singing to Marvin Gaye, Uh, you know, uh, being invited to Freddie Mercury, and fucking Freddie Mercury was playing me um, because Freddie Straker, my friend, was very good friends with with Freddie, and, and Freddie was playing me these tracks because I said why don't you do something funky and he said yes I've done some I have and he played me two tracks he did with Michael Jackson which and nobody believed me and it's only YouTube now people have heard these tracks that Freddie did with Michael they didn't believe he did it and I could think Freddie might be with Michael Jackson he played them to me played them to me so you know and I was close to doing a collaboration um, with Freddie and uh, a few of the other artists but because of schedules and things like that. But he was always interested in my harmony. It's how I did my harmony. Because I, I, I have a different way of how I work. And, um, so, you know, it was great. And it was, I've had a wonderful exchanges of, of, um, musical ideas and thoughts and stuff like that. Well, let's have a listen to the practically unknown duet that you just referenced between Michael Jackson and Freddie Mercury. Uh, You've been telling people about it for years, so let's bring it to our audience now, Lee. This is There Must Be More to Life Than This. There must be more to life than this. That is Freddie Mercury and Michael Jackson. They worked on three songs together that were never released. And you can thank our guest, Lee John, if you've never heard that before, for bringing it into our great conversation tonight. Uh, Before we let you go, Lee, I'm going to ask you to pick our final track of the hour. I'm looking for a song that has a special place in your heart. Uh, It's always guaranteed to put you in the mood that you're looking for. Always makes you feel better. What would that be for you? Before I do a show, sometimes, uh, or many times, my bands and my singers, they know it's time for the show because Lee's going to put Ash and Simpson on. You know, I'm going to be singing that, you know, and it's, it's <laughs> I mean, they produced Whitney Houston. Oh, yeah. Written for Ross and, and, and so many people, Shaka Khan. Um, so, you know, I love Ash and Simpson and um, they're, you know, they are, you know, amazing writers and singers and stuff. So, Every time I need to inspire, I put Ash and Simpson on, and uh, that uplifts me. Now it's solid. 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 Ashford and Simpson, Solid. Our final track in the Great Conversation Hour, as chosen by our special guest, Lee John of Imagination. Thank you, Lee, so much again for taking the time uh, to to share a few musical memories with us. Uh, A happy anniversary for your 40th anniversary. Uh, Best of luck with all the dates and the box set, and um, we look forward to speaking again. 
Thank you very much. Thank you, Jackie. Cheers, mate. All the best. Bye. Lee John, lovely bloke.